So because I don't only, only want to show you how to tune your car in software or with a standalone ECU, I'm also wanting to show you how to tune the hardware side of things. That's why we have three different heads here and one over there, but we'll stick with these three for now. I can explain something on the other one, but now I want to tell you or want to explain to you in this video or video series on how to port your head or how to port and polish your head, however you want to say it, and um, actually what you need to look out for because a lot of people um, do things that really don't need to be done or overdo it in most cases and don't really know what to look out for because there are a few things that are important when it comes to head porting, be it like the different layouts of the intake or exhaust ports, or just be it the different sizes or what you need to actually do to make the head flow better. So before we do anything practical, uh, we or I want to show you some theory on what we are aiming for or rather what uh, we're looking for in port design and what actually needs to happen to make your head more efficient when it comes to power. Uh, not necessarily down low torque, although we are still trying to keep down low torque or mid-range torque at the basically maximum it was stock because if you go uh, above a certain point it will drop off in the mid-range so you will sacrifice mid-range for gaining top end power and we want to basically just enhance everything or enhance the top end so that we can uh, make more power because most heads are limited in that department what you see here is basically two port designs and the yellow one would be one that is close to a stock uh, or typical head port that you would be looking at a for example a 90s head usually uh, they are usually built like that 90 street cars and on the top the red one is what you would be ideally aiming for Though this is not an extreme scenario, this can still be found in some cars, some street cars, um, even relatively uh, humane engines. In a race application, for example, this would be even more extreme, the angle would be even steeper, and the goal is to make the path for the air as easy as possible. So basically, the more open or direct the path for the air is to the valve or the back of the valve the better and we want to minimize any disturbances we want to minimize anything that stands in the way of the air that goes into the port you gotta think of the air as basically the same as a liquid because thinking of air having weight is a little bit difficult if you can or if you would imagine air kind of acting something like water inside of a port yes it sounds kind of weird but it actually will make sense uh, because it has a lot of weight by the time you are actually under a high load or for example under high boost there will be a lot of air at a very high speed entering the port and any restriction any edges anything else or any anything that's in the way of that air will give you issues or will reduce performance this is why a head like this or a port like this is optimal well most of the heads we're talking about will have this yellow form or this yellow design i have a few ports right here usually those are pretty bad as design goes they are not as optimal as you would see in a at least early 90s uh, engine <clears throat> but they demonstrate what we want to talk about pretty well so they have a very shallow angle which means that the air has to turn quite a way and quite a bit until it reaches the back of the valve so the problem is here while on lower rpms it's 
relatively easy for the air to still be attached to this bottom corner so it there's a not that big of a difference in the air speed on this side and on this side the higher the air or the volume of the air gets and the higher obviously the rpm gets the higher the difference is going to be from here to here because the air is traveling here and basically is getting squished down here and therefore here you have a very high velocity of air and here there's basically nothing happening and the other problem is if your air is going over this corner the issue is that can appear is that it will stall right here so it will stall on this corner if the radius is too tight it will stall just in a as like for example in a plane wing if the airflow is too quick or too fast it will stall and then instead of going attached to the corner down onto the back of the valve it will just go here and basically jump in quotations to the other side of the valve together with the other high pressure exhaust gases and the other thing is that can create not only very much turbulence here but it also can create an issue where it's actually sucking up again combustion chamber also like spent gases so you are creating a less efficient scenario so as you can see those are pretty bad uh, head designs as flow goes the middle one here is probably still the best because while it starts even lower the corner is made or the radius is made a lot better and it is a lot easier for the flow to still be attached most modern cars or modern ports will look more like this so they will have quite a ways of distance right here and they will have a relatively tight turning radius down to the valve but the thing is the valve has a relatively uh, steep angle so it's not as bad because the air does not have to turn as much but the problem here is that we are still having to give the air some time or rather the air still has some trouble with not straightening out or it will head the valve or can have uh, hit the valve in a very weird angle so this is why you have to watch out for if you are enlarging the port and this is why uh, a lot of people do wrong or where a lot of people overdo things even when starting out like a slight head porting job where they say well i'm doing like a stage one head port i will enhance like or i will make this chamber here a little bit larger so the inlet of the port um, and they do it on the bottom and the top what you want to do actually is in theory you want to make this angle steeper like i showed you before so what you want to do is you actually want to take only material off the top if you are not port matching for example and are actually trying to make the ports larger then you want to make or take volume up off, uh, off the top but actually not the bottom. If you can, you might even want to fill in the bottom like this. For example, you see how this is going down again. You could fill this so that it is one line and fill that, for example, with um, JB Weld or something that actually <laughs> obviously does not come off, so it does not land in your engine. But you could fill this so you don't have any air that's passing here but the port in general is shifted slightly upwards so it is a little bit steeper if you have for example shaved off this you will obviously have to do those adjustments also in your intake manifold and then you will have a little bit of a more efficient port design then what's also important is that your port is free of anything that stands in the way of air, in the air. For example, we have the valve guide, as you can see here, uh, that can stand in the way, although you'll have to watch out when um, removing material off that so that it is still long enough to support the valve enough. And also the radius, you can really get a lot when 
adjusting this radius here for example on this one this section here is relatively relatively tight so if by widening this radius here or making the angle a little bit um, a little bit wider such as for example in the exhaust port you could for example put some material on here and then make that curve wider in general you could gain some top end power because the flow will stay attached longer to the port walls and this is what you want to be doing also the bowl so this area here just needs to be clean there's a lot of times when valve seats are recut the uh, there are actually edges or steps right here in the valve seats which should be eliminated so that you have no restrictions and no sharp edges for the air to either stall so lose its attached flow or uh, where there is a restriction but those are the main factors you want to look for what's also important is to not go much bigger in the throat area or rather in the general port area if you are doing just a normal porting job because going too large in general in the whole port means either for example in this case here down here is a cooling jacket so if you hit that you will have problems and you have, will have water ingress into the head or into the port which obviously is not a good thing but also you are going to lose port velocity which means you are going to lose a lot of low end torque even by going a, a few percent a larger in the port diameter itself or in general you will lose port velocity and a lot of low end torque even if that's just a little bit on the exhaust side usually the exhaust side is a little smaller but it also has the same things uh, that's going for the intake side though the angle of the port is not as important as the flow is very or relatively turbulent anyway when coming out of the exhaust port so there's not much um, in the way of aerodynamics you will just have to make a lot of ports are sized a little bit small because they need to spool a small turbo quickly or they want to maximize the heat in the exhaust ports so if you want more top end it makes sense to enlarge the exhaust ports also in general if you're running a big turbo the smaller exhaust ports don't do much for you and it makes sense to sacrifice the non-existent low end power with some top end power anyway so in this case making those ports larger is actually a good thing as for surface finishes on both of those, the exhaust um, ports should be as clean as possible or as polished as possible because if any debris or any uh, carbon sticks to them, that's actually a negative thing and can be avoided with polishing it to a mirror finish. On the intake side though, it should be left slightly rough with a 80 grit or 120 grit finish. Um, because it is proven that a very very slick uh, intake port can lead to premature stalling of the uh, intake gases or like the air that comes into the intake port so leaving the finish a little bit rough is a better thing uh, than polishing it <laughs> there's also people who do a like golf ball uh, a dimple thing whatever that doesn't really make a lot of sense only it only works when you are uh, doing the exact right distance so if the distance is the same across the whole port and if you're really going all out uh, on a normal porting job it doesn't really make a difference and it does not make a difference if it's not made by a CNC machine uh, because the uh, distance between those dimples needs to be exact and exactly the same to actually work uh, so in this case it's not really uh, doesn't really have a great effect so that's so much for the theory what we are going to be doing in our case we are going to be a, going to do a little bit of an extended porting job 
Uh, so we are going to finish off anything that is that sticks out that is um, imperfect basically because there's a lot of casting flash from cutting uh, and stuff from cutting the valve seats that m needs to be removed and in a stock head there is quite a lot of that. We are also going to knife edge the dividers in the valve or in the ports so from where it goes to one port into two ports for each valve. We're going to thin those out as much as possible so there are no restriction for the air passing through. And we're going to optimize the port floor also. So we are going to do basically a performance improvement of about 60% what the maximum would be able to do. And this is a hand porting job, so of course it's not going to be as good as a CNC porting job, but it will get you most of the way there with just basic hand tools and not that much. Or rather, it will take a little while, but not as much financial uh, trouble as, for example, a CNC head port. Now, in the next part, I will show you the heads we have and a few different designs of ports and what you can expect or what you would have to do in these specific areas to achieve results that actually make a difference.